So how do we get more visibility on our Instagram content? Is it a good idea to run some uh, ads for our, even our what's, what's called stage one content? Uh, those of you who have never heard of my stage one, two, three content creation, I will just uh, briefly um, uh, remind you what they mean. Stage one content is exploratory. It's more casual. Uh, you should take the least amount of time doing it as possible and prolific. Put as much stage one content out there as possible. You're just exploring ideas, experimenting. Um, it could be through video. It could be through carousel posts. It could be through a certain image and then with some captions on Instagram. Basically, anything you post for the first time online, even if you worked for it, worked on it for eight years, <laughs> the first time it touches the online audience, it's still stage one because that's the first time you're getting any kind of market signal, whether or not it makes sense to people, right? So stage one, if it's going to take you either eight years or you know 18 minutes to make a stage one content, try to take 18 minutes, maybe not 18 minutes. Some of the, you know, some of us don't write as fast. So maybe it'll take us uh, you know, 45 minutes to write a stage one piece of content. So just put it out there as fast as you can or record a you know, three minute video, five minute video. And you, you, might, you might do three takes. Even with stage one content, you could still do two or three takes. So maybe it takes you, you know, 20 minutes to make a, a three to five minute stage one content and uh, you put it on you know, Instagram or whatever. So stage one, that's the stage two is, um, stage two is, when you look back on your stage one content for the previous month, you notice which ones made the more, most impact and you take that and then you improve on it to say, oh, that one really struck a chord with people. Let me now improve on that and maybe integrate some of the comments that they gave me or some questions or I have some other ideas for it. And let me repeat that content now with more refined ideas or you know a better story or taking some miscellaneous things out of it you know so stage two is improving and resharing or maybe taking a video and turning it into a written piece or taking a written piece and turning it into a video so that's all stage two type of actions and then stage three is to take the best of your stage two and turning it into a product online course a book um, a webinar a service coaching package you know um so that's stage three anyway so, you know, Nick here is asking a good question, like, is stage one content, like, if we're just starting an Instagram audience, you know, it's, it's like barely anyone is seeing our stuff, right? So, of course, we put stage one things out there, but how do we grow an audience when we have no, well, on Instagram, most of, most of us actually grow our audience when we start to uh, follow some of our colleagues, you know, on Instagram, and then they, some of them will follow us back, right? Like, some of your um, friends and colleagues, uh, when you join Instagram, Instagram will ask you whether you want to connect your Facebook or, or like, Hey, can I, can I look at your contacts, <laughs> contact list on your phone and see if you know anyone else on Instagram. And that's usually the first, you know, our first 20 followers or 50 followers or whatever it may be is you follow a bunch of people you already know that you actually care about. And then some of them will follow you back. But beyond that, you can then poke around on Instagram maybe search hashtags, right? Hashtags, I think of hashtags as a community. Hashtag is not, you put 30 of them, it's just to blast it out and to hope, hopefully somebody of the 30 of hashtags will find you. I think that's a, I think that's a very ineffective way and an inefficient way. I mean, come on, you got to copy and paste 30 hashtags. And by the way, the algorithms don't like it because it just looks spammy to people. And by the way, if you're going to put hashtags, put it as your first comment. Don't put it in your caption. That's, that's, uh, that's beginner stuff. You know, beginner mistake is put up the hashtags in the caption. No, no, put it in the first, add a, add a comment and put the hashtag there. Anyway, so I don't even use hashtags on, on, on Instagram because I've, I've tested them and it's, it's such pitiful reach on using hashtags. I'm like, Okay, yay, I reached 15 people with hashtags. And you might say, George, 15 is better than what I'm doing now. Fine. Okay, use hashtags maybe in the beginning. But it's like I can take $5 for an Instagram ad and reach 500 people, targeted people. It's like, hmm, research hashtags and reach 15 people on the one hand, or spend $5. On the, now I'm doing Instagram Reel, right? Like you can imagine this as an IG Reel. 15, you know, 
30 hashtags and I reach 30 people hmm. or spend $5 and reach 500 targeted people. Like which one? Pick one. What's, what's better use of your time and what looks better? People don't like to see hashtags. I mean, three hashtags, okay. You know, but 30 hashtags, people are like, yeah, that's a desperate Instagrammer or that's, that, that person doesn't know how to use Instagram. All the, all the okay, not, not all. Most of the ex expert Instagrammers don't use 30, 31 hashtags, right? They use a few. Um, and a lot of them like me don't even use any at all because we know how to run ads. And it's like $5, come on, you can spend $5. You'll reach more people with $5 than you would a whole month of using hashtags. So what's the point? You know, it's like, okay, you can spend $10 and double that, right? So, um, so back to the question, uh, but, but I wanted to say a bit about hashtags while I'm on it. If you will use hashtags, like I said, it's not, it's free traffic, but don't just do random stuff. Think of hashtags as a community of people. That's really the most authentic and effective way of looking at it. So before you start using a hashtag, you should search that hashtag. And so who, who are these people that are posting here? And do I want to be net caring with these people that are posting here on this? Because if I do, because guess who follows hashtags? The people who use them. You see what I mean? You're, you're reaching your, your colleagues, you're reaching your peers, your niche mates, you're not reaching potential clients. You're reaching people who might share your stuff with their audience and they're your potential clients. So think of hashtags as a community. You go, you research it, you see if it's people you like. And if it is people you like, it's a post that you like, oh, I wanna show up here too, it, it makes sense. Then yes, you might then actually follow some of them, right? Then they'll be like, oh, who's this person? They go look at you. And then they, they might follow you, a few of them might follow you back. Okay. So that's how we get our first few followers, right? Friends, colleagues, and maybe the hashtag people that we want to connect with. Um, and follow hashtags too, right? Because then you'll start to find new people as, as they post hashtags. Um, and then step two, if you want to use, if you find some hashtags that you really like the kinds of people that are posting there, go ahead and use it. Like I said, three hashtags per post doesn't look spammy. It looks respectable. Go ahead and do it. You know, um, but like I said, you know, you could do all that for years and still just be reaching a few hundred people when you could spend $10 and reach up to a thousand people, sometimes more targeted people, fans of Brene Brown, fans of Eckhart Tolle, fans of Pema Chodron or Tara Brock or uh, Tony Robbins or name the influencer you want to reach fans of theirs. <laughs> you know, so um, the answer is. Sorry for such a long answer, Nick. Yes. <laughs> because how else are you going to grow your audience? I mean, uh, I'll, I'll say one more. B besides hashtags and um, paid ads, Instagram ads, Instagram boosts, et cetera, the other common way of growing your audience on Instagram is collabs. Uh, collabs are basically um, you, there's so many ways of doing it, and you'll see people doing it, but the most common way of collab collaboration on Instagram is to do an Instagram live with somebody else. I mean, you probably have seen people doing that. So it's like, okay, uh, you set a time together, you announce it to each of your audiences, you know, you create a nice image or whatever and say, oh, I'm going live with Nick on, you know, Thursday at 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific time, you know, maybe give a couple time zones. This is a mistake people make. 10 a.m. Pacific is like, 20% of your audience is in this, the correct time zone. No, 10 a.m. 10 a.m. pack slash 1 p.m. east slash, you know, 6 p.m. BST slash middle of the night Australia, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, okay. Announce it. And then once uh, the time comes, one, whoever the host is, right, whoever is helping the other really the host is the one promoting it essentially oh the other person can promote it later through their stories uh and maybe download the video and upload it themselves but you the host starts the the ig live and, and of course the other person has to be ready on ig like waiting waiting for the host right so the host starts the ig live and the other person waits uh waits for the host to start and then goes and joins the ig live as a as a viewer and then once the host sees that the the, the speaker is there as a viewer they can invite that viewer to become a speaker of the IG Live. And now, now you, you've seen it before. That's like, you know, two people up you know, top and bottom, they're talking to each other. So that's the most common way. And, and Nick, you know, how we do collabs, you know, who we reach out to is basically people with a similar sized audience as you. So again, this is free. 
right? You, be, you know, you have to pay money for this. You, know, you just have to pay for some potential rejection when you reach out to somebody because not everyone's going to say yes. In fact, it's going to, you know, a, minor, a minority of people will say yes, unfortunately. So you pay for it in time spent, you know, DMing like 10 people and getting, you know, three people writing you back and one person saying yes, you know, some kind of ratio like that. So it might be worth doing it. Um, now, you're, you're going to get a higher yes rate if you if the message you send them is more thoughtful than generic. I get a lot of generic DMs. I mean, I could tell they basically copy pasted that to a thousand people, right? But it's like, George, I am, I'm just, I'm so grateful for your, for your kind of con content out there. I really like your recent posts about authentic this or blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I, I have a similar audience. You know, I think we both share audiences of blah, 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 blah. And, you know, and we have a similar sized audience as well. And I, I wonder, what if, what, if, what if we do an IG live together? I think it'll help grow both of our audiences. And even, even, if, you, even if you have only, you know, a um, hundred followers on Instagram, right? And someone else has between 50 and 300 followers, some kind of ratio like that, okay? So if you have a hundred, look for someone between 50 and 300. I usually say 50 and 200. That's, but it's like, you can stretch it. You can stretch on the high end a little bit if you're bold enough to reach out to, to someone with three times the size of your audience. If you have um, 300 people, you reach out to someone between 100 and 1,000. You know, you see what I mean? So you, you just keep on doing that kind of IG live. And when, 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 once that happens, by the way, not, not all of your speakers that you interview or have a conversation with are willing to promote it. So don't pressure anybody, but just let them know when it's, when it's up, when it's recorded, um, and then they can easily share it as a story, or you could even give it to them as a video file. You download the IG Live, you give it to them as a Google Drive video file and say, hey, you are welcome to upload this as an IG TV, you know, IG video as well, if, if you'd like. And if you do, please tag me. I'd, I'd love to see that, you know. Um, so anyway, that's, so, so long story, <laughs> two free ways of growing your IG audience, hashtags thoughtfully as a more of a community feel and um, collabs. Uh, most people just do it that way because people don't know how to do Instagram ads. But if you can do Instagram ads, you're just saving, you're shaving years off of your audience building because you can reach thousands every month just targeted, you know, just like that. So yes, it's still worth doing. Now, you might say, well, George, I just have stage one content. So, but Nick, the thing is, remember, we start off with our colleagues, our friends and peers, right? That, that, that follow you back. And we might start off with some hashtag colleagues that we start to get to know and they might follow us back. You're going to get, and let me ask you, Nick, are you getting at least one like per post? Okay, let me ask you, do some of your posts get at least one like? Yes, I um, of course. probably average somewhere at least five to 15. Oh, well, there you go. Okay, well, that's better than, that's better than someone who's starting out. But I was just say, speaking to the person who's starting out. I'm like, if you're starting out, do you get at least one like sometimes on some of your posts? And the person will say, well, yeah, of course, I get one like. No, not, not from your mom, okay, but from somebody else other than your family. Do you get one like? If so, that one like is more than the others that got zero likes. So the three stages of content still apply. <laughs> the thing that got one like made an impact because remember every single one like you get represents multiple likes because multiple people enjoyed it. Just only one person bothered to click like. Others are like, oh, wow, that's cool. And then kept scrolling. Just I'll always remember that. One like equals who knows between two to 10 to 20 people who, who liked, who enjoyed it, okay? One comment, positive comment, is even more representative because someone has to actually type out a, a comment that represents, you know, five to, you know, 30 other people who enjoyed it but didn't bother to comment. So, yes, even one like represents, ooh, that one is worth running an ad on. Do you see what I mean? Obviously, Nick, you're, if you're averaging five to 15, you, you have plenty of data. You know, this one got, this one got five likes, this one got 15. Now you know. So yeah, hope this helps. All right, and a couple of related comments I'm gonna bring forward. Um, thanks to um, Faith says that 
uh, Brock Johnson was explaining that hashtags are like a folder, like a filing system. Yeah, hashtags, yeah, can be seen as that. It's a, it's a community of content creators who are saying, hey, everyone, this is about this topic and you might get inspiration. So really think of, hash, like I said, hashtags is a community of net caring. You find, find peers that you could collaborate with, but it's also a community of inspiration of content. It's like, hey, other content similar to this topic might inspire your own, say, oh, I, I, I have my thing to say about that too, right? Like that's how you can get content ideas is through, through hashtags. And Faith also said some hashtags are really bloated, like several million followers, right? Or several million posts, uh, very, very generic hashtag, like hashtag boss babe, you know, or something like that, or hashtag winning. It's like, come on, you know, like who are, who, who are, you? remember, like, even if you want to do hashtag winning, just remember the people you're reaching are really generic and, and you don't want to, you don't want people following you that are not really your ideal, ideal clients or ideal collaborators. Because if you have generic people following you, people who are not your ideal clients or collaborators, you will run up your ad costs over in the future. When you say, George, I'm ready to run ads. I'll be like, have you been using hashtags or like hashtag winning? Because now you have to pay a lot more for ads because your warm audience is now huge. You know, people who have checked out your account is now in the tens of thousands and you got to pay a lot more. Sorry, you didn't take my class because no, you want to keep your Instagram audience small and targeted. No one ever tells you this. Like you don't want millions of followers. Are you kidding me? Like you, then you're going to reach them again. You, what are you going to pay thousands of dollars per campaign? That's in some madness. I'm always trying to push people away who are not my ideal people. I want, I want 10,000, 10,000 ideal clients or ideal collaborators. Great. Otherwise, I don't want you there because you're going to eat up my costs, you know, for, for paid ads. I don't want that. So anyway, that's why that's why you should use so like Faith is saying, you know, do, do a smaller hashtag where it's really more of a community and you're reaching people that are really, you know, good people you want to actually reach more of. So um, okay, Colleen, great question. Uh, before starting to run Instagram ads, should I already have a certain amount of content previous posts to make ads worthwhile? Absolutely not. I'm glad you asked it. I started running ads for a, a, a partnership I was working with where we were starting and I ran ads from day one. We had one post, one ad, you know, boom, put it out there and then just, just build it up over time. Um, obviously, uh, some people who look at your, most people who look at our ads, Instagram ads are just going to engage right there. Like they're not going to go to your profile. They're just going to, they're going to engage and comment or whatever, and then they're going to keep moving on. And then you can reach them again because the fact that they either liked it or they scrolled on the carousel or they commented, any of those are engagement signals that then allow you to run ads to them again. It's called a warm audience ad, which is why you want the right people doing that, not just random people doing it, right? So, you know, I, they, they don't have to go to your profile. Most of them don't. So you can run ads, warm ads again, and, you know, another $3 to reach my really tiny warm audience. It's fine. $3, you know, have your warm audience see your stuff once a month for $5, $10, really good deal. You know, you continue nurturing the people who have commented or liked or whatever. So, um, but yes, over time, obviously you're going to post more. And, and once you have like three or six posts, that's enough. Uh, but even starting with one, like I said, you know, th that kind of extreme example, I think is really, really fine as well. So let's see here. Okay. And, and Kali asked me any, any tips I want to share for IG ads. Basically, uh, take your stage two content and run IG ads with them. So in other words, that's the most efficient way of doing it because you already uh, see that it's making an impact, especially, ideally, content that has at least one positive comment you, you know in, and and if you have like a buddy of yours <laughs> and you're like doing some ig ads together and you can buddy up and say hey hey um mira i'm about to run an ad on this one would you mind just adding a positive comment like and ideally more than amen you know <laughs> amen exclamation mark or more than more than like a heart or a fire icon like just try to add a few words like if it's a few, because basically uh, thoughtful comments beget more thoughtful comments. And so when, when people see it, they're like, oh, that's the etiquette of this post. And I'm going to, you know, so yes, that's, that's my biggest tip is stage two content and uh, try to have a, a thoughtful comment if possible.